to all of you who's here with us today at 1077 St. James and to all our online viewers, a blessed morning. My name is Christine and I'd like to welcome you at International Worship Center's English Sunday service. Truly, the Lord has been so good here in Winnipeg. Our government has allowed up to 100 people to gather at one place to worship and we're so blessed that you chose to spend your Sunday morning with us. To all of you who's watching online, each one of you is important to us and we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to know where you're watching from and if you've got any praise reports, any answered prayers, or anything at all that you'd like to share that you know will inspire and encourage uh, other people out there, please feel free to type them down at the comment section below. And um, I know everyone here is very happy because yesterday is officially the first day of spring. And I know we've been waiting too long for that. And um, I thank the Lord for his protection and uh, for his provisions for each and everyone's lives throughout uh, the last winter. And at this point, I'd like to uh, invite everyone in the congregation to stand. And to all of you who's watching, wherever you may be, please join us in singing some songs of praise and worship led by our music team. I 
your love Slave to the darkness If he wasn't for the cross You have won me With your kindness Chased me down when I was lost Where would I be If he wasn't for the cross And hallelujah Thank you Jesus I was a prisoner Now I'm not And with your blood you Bought my freedom Hallelujah for the cross Oh, thank you for the cross All my shame was met with mercy Now your mercy will be my song all the glory, all the power of the cross, oh, and hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, I was a prisoner, now I'm not going with your blood, you, and brought my freedom, hallelujah. I'm healed, and by your death I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished. It is done. By your stripes I'm healed, and by your death I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished. It is done. By your stripes I'm healed. And by your death I live The power of sin is overcome It is finished, it is done And by your stripes I'm healed And by your death I live The power of sin is overcome It is finished, hallelujah Thank you Jesus I was a prisoner now I'm not focused oh, with your blood, you brought my freedom, hallelujah, for the cross, oh hallelujah, thank you Jesus, I was a prisoner, now I'm not. Jesus, I was a prisoner, now I'm not, cause with your blood you brought my freedom, hallelujah for the cross, oh thank you for the cross, Jesus. Oh, thank you for the cross. Yes, Lord God. Lord, uh, we thank you for, we know, Lord God, that you have gathered us today in this place, Lord God, to bless your name. Lord, we praise you for you were a great God. Lord, you were a good father. You were the God who will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, we thank you for you have loved us, Lord God, even before the creation of the world. 
And Lord, as we come to bless your name, as we come to serve you today, I pray that may you open our hearts, O God. Lord, may you speak to us, Lord God, and may you reveal, Lord God, your power and your greatness, Lord God, to us this morning. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We love you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now be seated. Again, to all of you who's here with us today at 1077 St. James, and to all of you who's watching online, welcome to International Worship Center's English Sunday Service. My name's Christine, and we're so glad that we can have you once again here today. And um, the Lord has been so good to us here in Winnipeg, as we've said earlier. Our government has allowed up to 100 people to gather at one place and worship. And uh, we are so glad that you guys can spend your, uh, that you guys chose to spend your morning with us here today. And for those of you who'd like to uh, spend their Sundays with us, um, you can register online through Eventbrite. And you can find that link at our IWC Facebook page. And... Um, to all our online viewers, each one of you is very important to us. We'd like to hear from you. We'd like to know where you're watching from, if you've got any uh, praise reports, any answered prayers, or anything at all that you'd like to share that you know would encourage and inspire others out there. Please feel free to type them down at the comment section below. And if you've got any prayer requests, we encourage you to continue to engage with us online so we can lift you up in our prayers. And um, I know that every one of you is so happy here because it's officially spring. And um, I am thankful that uh, the Lord has carried us through another Manitoban winter. And um, with spring comes forth new hope and um, a new season of uh, getting engaged in prayer and fasting is coming up. This coming April, we will be having our next prayer and fasting uh, week, and our theme would be Captivated by God's Peace. It would be from April the 12th to 18th, and we encourage you to continue to connect with your life groups, with your leaders and your mentors, so you can get further details on this upcoming event. And um, our registration for Empower previously known as Launchpad, is ongoing. And here's a short video from Pastor Jerome. Let's watch it. Good day, future leaders of IWC, and welcome to Empower. Empower is now online. And it starts on March 21st to June 26th. And this is the first time that we're using the Learn Dash online platform. Okay? So, what's going to happen? There will be three modules with three lessons each. And they're only 30 to 40 minutes long. And the great thing about this, this is self-paced. You can do this. You can finish it whenever you are available. As long as you finish it within the course duration. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, how can I enroll? Now, these are some of the basic steps that you need to do if you want to enroll in our Empower class. Number one, you have to talk to your live group leader, cluster leader, or network leader to get their endorsement. Uh, so you'll have that discussion with them. If you feel that you're ready, if you feel that you're interested in leading a live group and learning more and taking uh, your leadership skill to the next level. Second, your leader will then send an email to lead at iwcenter.com endorsing you with your name and your complete address so that they, the LTT team, can find out who are the sets of enrollees. Third, after getting your email address, we'll be sending all the enrollees uh, in their email a link to the Learn Dash Learning System Plus. It also includes an attachment with a starter kit so that you know how to navigate Learn Dash and what to prepare and what to do next. And that's it. So what are you waiting for? If you feel that you are being called by God to lead, answer the call. See you in Empower. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Hello. Thank you, Pastor Jerome. Uh, I'd like to apologize for some technical difficulties, but I'm sure that uh, you guys have grasped 
what Empower is. To those who are interested, um, we encourage you to please connect with your uh, life group leaders and your mentors so you can uh, know how to uh, get started on some uh, online sessions this coming spring. And uh, we continue to encourage you to uh, watch our midweek refuel series. We're still going through unveiling. It's a study on the book of Revelation led by our dear pastora Gigi Gonzalez. We encourage you, your family, and your friends to take advantage of this uh, very timely resource. It's every Wednesdays at 7 p.m. For you not to miss it, it's on our Facebook page. Please follow and like it. And to those of you who haven't downloaded our IWC app yet, we encourage you to do so. So you can get... So you can get... Um, real-time updates on WhatsApp at IWC. And here's an instructional video on how you can download it. Download and just wait for it to load up on your phone. Once it's on your phone, hit open, and then it might ask you if you want notifications, that's completely up to you. And now either search nearby churches or type in International Worship Center. It should be the one with our logo on it. And then hit change to change the app icon. And then it'll ask you if you want to log in to your Tidely account. You can either hit log in, sign up, or exit for now. And there you are. For the second way to get the app on your phone, open up your preferred browser. And then in the search bar, type in tidely.app.link forward slash iwcenter. It'll redirect you to your app store and then hit download. Open up the app, set up your notification preferences, and change the app icon. And you're all set. We are so Thank you for that. Uh, on behalf of IWC family, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your continues and your faithful giving to our church. It is through your giving that our church is able to produce more online sessions, more online resources to further the Lord's work here in this part of the world and at this particular time. And um, on your screens right now, you'll see the different ways in how you can give to our church. We continue to thank the Lord for your hearts, for your generosity, and we continue to lift you up in our prayers. And before we proceed to receiving the Lord's word, I'd like to lead you in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, um, we thank you, Lord God, for you were a great provider. Thank you, Lord God, for you have blessed us beyond measure. Thank you for making us a blessing, Lord God, to bless other people, oh God. Lord, thank you for the many ways, Lord God, the many opportunities that you have given us, Lord God, that, Lord, we can be a part of the sacrifice of praise for your kingdom. Lord, um, as we listen to your word, I lift up to you, Pastor Juni. May you use him mightily, oh God. And Lord, may we receive your word wholeheartedly. May we embrace it, O oh God. May we love it, and, we, and may we share it boldly, Lord God, to the people around us. We thank you, Lord God, and we love you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We can search all our lives, trying to find a purpose for all this. We can keep walking and walking and walking, yet still feel empty and still feel lost. We say there's got to be a reason, a way to live our lives with direction. 
would show you the gift of salvation, the promise of joy. In me, there's freedom, for I paid the ultimate price. Come, this is the way. I am the way. Good morning, everybody. There you go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our English service in person and online. And if you're at the other side of the globe, good evening. And we're so grateful and thankful and privileged to, to have you here with us to join us in worshiping God and growing in grace and in the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So now we're on our second Sunday with our new series entitled, This is the Way. Now, let's start with the word study, particularly in Hebrew. The word sin means, you know, the, 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 the real meaning, the Hebrew meaning of the word, because, you know, uh, the Old Testament was, you know, written in Hebrew, and then the New Testament is Greek. Now, the word sin in Hebrew means missing the, missing the mark or going astray. In our language, simply, you're lost. You're in the wrong direction. Okay? Now, the word law means the right path. So when we are living in sin, we're not living according to the law of God or the laws of God. So the thing, though, the original sense and meaning of that, missing the mark, going astray, you're in the wrong direction, is not about just making a mistake. The essence of that word sin, missing the mark, is rebellion. Sin is an act of rebellion from the heart. And rebellion is the desire for independence. And you might be saying, what is, where, 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 when did original sin happen? You know, original sin on earth happened in the garden with Adam and Eve, but original sin happened in heaven with Lucifer, one of one of the most powerful, most beautiful angels in all of the angelic host of God. And so the thing with, with Lucifer is that, uh, yeah, we're just trying to paraphrase it, he constantly looked at himself in a mirror and he started liking what he saw. And in the process, pride grew in his heart and decided to go independent from God and just be at the level where God is. He's no longer under God. He's no longer accountable to God. That he wanted to be like God. I mean, you can find that in the, in the Old Testament where, you know, Lucifer said the five eyes. The five eyes of Lucifer. And so pride um, took over his heart. It led to rebellion. Rebellion led to independence. And eventually Lucifer became Satan. He took on the character of evil. Because when you, when you are prideful, rebellious, independent, you take on the character of Satan, which is evil. So he, he lost his beauty, his, 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 you know, the holiness of God in his life, and, and, and he became evil. And so when we sin from the time of Adam and Eve to the present, it is rooted in pride, it is rooted in rebellion, it is... Rooted in independence from God. We don't want to be under God. And, you know, just recently, probably, if you have been um, kind of like a royal follower, the monarchy of England or the Commonwealth, you know what's happening, right? Because of this um, expose of Prince Harry and Meghan concerning, you know, what they have experienced in the palace, that right now what is put into question is, will the monarchy survive? Not just in England, but in the 44 or 45 other countries that are part of the Commonwealth. And we're one of those. And so therefore, the head of state of Canada is Queen Elizabeth. And in fact, there was a survey done just recently that majority of Canadians are now willing to let go of the monarchy, meaning we, we as a nation are willing to be independent of England and independent of the monarchy of the Great, Great Britain, the United Kingdom. 
In England, it's still high, around 75%. They still respect the queen, respect the monarchy. They still want, wanted a monarch to be a head of state. But the younger generation, it's actually alarming. And so this is something that can be potentially existential threat to the monarchy. In fact, Barbados is actually going to be independent of the United Kingdom and the head of state being Queen Elizabeth by November. And that has nothing to do with what happened you know, during the interview of Oprah. And so to live in sin means to live in rebellion against God, to live independent of God. You're no longer under God because you choose to be no longer under God. If you take note in the temptation that, Lu that Satan did when he spoke to Eve, and of course, Adam was watching there. He was there. The first thing that he said is that it was concerning God. He, he created a crack when it comes to the integrity and the character of God. You know, why is it that God doesn't want you to eat of the forbidden fruit? Because he doesn't want you to know good and evil. He doesn't want you to become like him. That was the initial salvo. And that was the one that caused sin from Adam and Eve to be now, you know, in every human being born into this world in our human nature. Becoming now that which is we are in trouble with. And so God, out of his love and mercy, he wants to bless us. He wants to be freed from the, the blockage of sin. So he created arrangements called contracts or covenants so that God can be freed up to bless us. And it is in particular to the animal sacrificial system. Now, the animal sacrificial system is what you call a substitutionary sacrificial system. So instead of the sinner sacrificing his life, because if you do that, that's suicide, that's murder, there's a need for an innocent sacrifice in the Old Testament, it was the animals to be, to, be, to be killed, to be sacrificed, to be offered, and the blood be, be offered as an atonement and forgiveness of the sinner. And so because of that sacrificial system, when applied properly with a penitent and repentant heart, then God, who is holy, righteous, and just, a God who is transcendent above us in our physical world, in this life on earth, in this world, can come to us, relate with us, and then bring what he has promised in that covenant. Now, the old covenant is what we have learned in, the, in, 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 in what I have shared last Sunday. It's called the old Mosaic covenant. It's the agreement between God and the nation of Israel through Moses. And that's where we find the Ten Commandments and the other laws, the civic laws, the moral laws, the ceremonial laws, which is, you know, the sacrificial system is the the major part of that ceremonial laws. Individual sacrifice of animals for the individual sinner, and then, the, of course, the Day of Atonement for the whole nation. And so what happened was that God gave holy and righteous laws, but we are sold to sin. We have a human nature. And that the sacrificial system in the Old Testament was not enough to remove guilt and in our conscience, because you know that is those animals are not perfect um, substitutes. They're not perfect sacrifices, because they're also part of the sinful, um, the sinful, tainted, sinful uh, creation here on earth. And so it was not enough to deal with the blockage of sin. Then, of course, in the old in the old covenant is self effort. It is not enough by our mere human effort to obey God because we have this weakness. We have this sinful human nature. And so the old covenant gave a condemned guilty verdict on each and, guilty verdict on each and every one of us. It actually made it worse because the law actually made it clear what is a violation of the law. Before the law of Moses, there was no such thing as you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, and all of those things. The law made it clear and made it inexcusable for each and every one of us that if we have violated the law, that we are excused. No, we know the law. 
we know the laws of, the laws of Moses, the Ten Commandments. And, and so that made us more guilty. And so because of that, God came up with a new agreement, a new arrangement, a new contract, a new covenant. And that is in the person of Jesus Christ. And it's a better covenant with better promises. And I'll explain it to you along the way. So man's biggest problem is not COVID. It's sin. Okay? It's not COVID. It's not cancer. It's sin. It's rebellion against God. It's independence from God. And we are going in the wrong path. Or we are going in the wrong direction. Now, this, this series is not just about us having a right way and access to God, a right path to God. It is also about being an example to those around us so that they can also find their way into the presence of God or they may be able to know how to, re- how to connect with God. You know, if you, if, if you have been to a wax museum of which my family and I were given the privilege when we were in New York, thanks to my sister, We went to uh, this wax museum, and there are so many wax figures that look like they're real people. And so until, until you approach it closely, you cannot identify it in a sense if it's fake or not. But the moment you come closer, you know that it's a wax figure. It's like a mannequin, it's, it's a dummy. And so uh, there was one time, but it was really funny. I, I, I went into beside this person and I said, take a picture of this, this guy. And, then, and the guy said, excuse me. It was a real person. It was not a wax dummy or a mannequin, but a real person. And so I, I, was, I was mistaken. I said, sorry. So there were, because the whole building, I think there's like four or five floors. The whole building is just filled with wax figures and, and all kinds of people. And not every. Every, every figure or any, every mannequin is something that I know. So I didn't, talk, I didn't think that this person was actually a real person. He was a security guard wearing not a security guard uniform, just an ordinary <coughs> clothing. In Christianity, when we see people from, the, from a distance, you think they're Christians. See a pastor, you see a deacon, you see a board member, you see an usher, you see Christians. You see them post scriptures on Facebook and Instagram, and you see they're Christians. They're in in, in new covenant relationship with God. They live in the power of the new covenant. But when you go up close, you find out they're not real Christians. They're dummies. They're mannequins. They have the facade, they have the form, but they don't have the power thereof. The reason being, we as Christians, we are for the most part, if not sometimes, let me, let me be nice to you, sometimes, I'm not a real Christian, if not most of the time, we don't display the power thereof. It's because everybody or a lot of people, both Christians and non-Christians, wants to be blessed without necessarily being under the covenant or the agreement that God has established. Right? Some people are still locked up in the old covenant. Lord, I promise you. No, we promise something we cannot fulfill. The new covenant is not based on promising something from you. Lord, I'll obey more. Lord, I'll be better. I'll be nicer and all kinds of stuff. And so what happens if we are trying to transact, connect with God in an arrangement, an agreement that is obsolete, then there's no power for us. No available power and resource to to connect with God and to enjoy the blessings of God. God cannot do what He wants to do, the good that He wants to do, based on a covenant, an agreement, an arrangement He has given. And so therefore, as Christians, instead of being loving, we are more resentful and hateful and angry and, and bitter. And it's sad to say that sometimes Christians are the ones who late who come late at work and they are like raring to be out before four, they're there quarter to five or quarter to four close to the door. And when the boss is not around, they're the first to complain, the first to gossip, the first to slander and malign other people. 
And yet they have bumper stickers and say, I go to church, I love Jesus. And they post verses on Facebook, Instagram, 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 and Twitter, and all kinds of social media platforms. Christian mannequins, Christian dummies, Christian wax figures. Why? Because a lot of us are trying to be blessed without being under God's agreements, God's covenant, God's arrangement. And so we need to know and understand the new covenant. And we need to abide by it. Now, in every covenant, in every ag- agreement, there is what you call terms and conditions. Have you, have you seen some? If you have done, like, even sign up for a bank account, there are terms and conditions. Right? Mortgage, rental, buying a car, terms and conditions. Even your receipt, it has terms and conditions. Why? Return and exchange. You can only return it 90, uh, uh, within 90 days with the receipt. Okay? No amount of begging and fighting and all kinds of stuff will give you the privilege or the right if you have failed or you have violated the terms and conditions. Now, definition of terms and conditions is to identify the rights the privileges and responsibilities of both parties. Include an example or definition of key terms. Now, recently I was just reviewing a, a, an increase of payment for our mortgage, and at the back of it, under the terms and condition, are the pronouns I, we, and other pronouns. And it explains who is the I in this contract, who is the we, and who is the they, and all kinds of pronouns and stuff. Imagine you think you're the I and you're not the I. You're supposed to be the day. Or the, you're, you're supposed to be the I and you think you're the day. You're all kinds of stuff. And so you are in a wrong, wrong position, part, and responsibility. And so in this new covenant, this is basic. But let me tell you, if you understand this, this is very powerful. Because it gives you the understanding how to relate with God. It gives you the understanding how to be under the blessing of God by being under the covenant of God. This present and only covenant that matters is called the New Covenant. That's why we have an Old Testament and a New Testament. Now, the Old Testament is not necessarily the Mosaic Law or the, law, the, uh, the, the covenant of law for the nation of Israel. There's di- there are different covenants or agreements with God. In the, Old, in the Old Testament, there's the Abrahamic covenant, and there's the uh, Davidic covenant, and, and, and many other no- Noah covenant. That's why we see a rainbow. It's a sign of God's covenant with Noah and the children after him. So when you see a rainbow, it means that God will not destroy the earth with the same way he destroyed and, and, and annihilated 99.9% of the population by a flood. So how is God going to judge the earth when he, in the final, in the end of, end of days? Well, it's by fire. That's what Peter said. But it's not by flood. But the major covenants in the Bible is the Mosaic covenant, the covenant of law given to Moses to the nation of Israel, and then the new covenant in Jesus Christ. So the old covenant, the Mosaic covenant, the covenant of law was given to, by God to Moses and given by Moses to the nation of Israel. The new covenant, the existing covenant, the only agreement with God that we should sign up with and know and apply into our lives is the new covenant in Christ Jesus. Okay? Now let me read this very, very important scripture found in Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? And you, he was talking to the Christians, the born-again Christians, those whose spirits have been re- regenerated, spirits who are made alive and now connected to God. So he was talking to the church in Ephesus. They were not, they were not Jewish. They were Gentiles. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. We're part of the Gentile category. We're non-Jewish. And so Paul was saying to them, you he made alive. So they're already born again. They're spiritually alive. They're already connected to God. They have the Holy Spirit in them. They believe in Jesus and all kinds of stuff. But he needed to explain to them so that they understand how to relate with God, how to have the blessings of God in their lives. In fact, the epistles of Paul are mostly either explanations of the new covenant or refutation or to argue against going back to the old covenant. 
that they need to be circumcised and they need to be this and that, especially the book of Galatians. And, and that's why we're going to be re reading and studying these different books and explain it so that we can be deep and strong and founded in faith in Christ. But I'm, say, I'm laying down the foundation here. And so he said, you, you, the Ephesian Christians, Gentiles, he made alive. God made you alive. Doesn't mean they're physically dead. They're spiritually dead. Who were dead in what? Trespasses and sins. Because of sin, they have been severed from God. We have been severed from God. It's like when you divorce. It's the death of the relationship. It doesn't mean you're both dead. Yeah, you wanted to kill each other, but husband and wife wanted to kill each other, but you're, you're not yet dead. Your marriage died and there was a separation. <clears throat> and the reason for the most part is there is a violation of the covenant of marriage. There's sin. There's unforgiveness. Those, those vows of, I will be with you through thick and thin, for richer and for poorer, in debt do us part. So there's a violation for some petty offenses decided to be bitter and unforgiving and so separated and divorced. Or a third party, which is a violation of the covenant of marriage, which is what you call adultery. And so you were dead, he was explaining to the Ephesian Christians, in trespasses and sins in which you, were, you once walked according to the course of this world. See, the world, when the Bible said the world, it means of the system. There's another definition of that world means humanity, for God so loved the world, the people. But this one, this is more of like the system of the devil in the world. The devil is the god of this world. Because when Adam and Eve, Eve sinned, they handed authority to Satan, which was primarily, formerly God's. So now you're under this course of this world before, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So it's a demonic spirit, according to Satan. And all of his legions of demons, formerly angels. Again, they have taken the character of evil. They, was, they were once holy, righteous, beautiful angels. When they rebelled against God and followed Satan, the chief rebel, they became evil. And there's a hierarchy of demonic principalities and powers and rulers. And so it, when we were dead in sin and trespasses, we were not yet born again. We were what? Controlled under the power of the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as others. Now, let me explain this. There are some teachers that I'm hearing right now that God doesn't love the world. God hates the world and God wants to punish the world. We're trying to humanize God. When God is a, has a multifaceted character and attributes, that He's both loving, perfectly loving, and perfectly just. The moment we try to separate this and say, oh, God is loving, but why is it that the Bible said that He hates sinners and wants to punish them? Because God is loving, but at the same time, just. So there, therefore, there's wrath for those who are the sons of disobedience, the sons of rebellion, those who are dead in trespasses and sin. That's the justice of God. But look at the next verse. But God, who is rich in mercy, God of love, you know what mercy is? He doesn't want to punish. He's just and there's wrath. There's punishment for sinners and rebels. But the love of God, doesn't want to do it. But God was rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us. See? And while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. They're saying, oh, there's a misconception that God's love is unconditional. Yeah, I believe in that. God's love is unconditional. He loved us and while we were yet sinners. But the blessings of God, to have a relationship with God, is conditional to the covenants. To the agreements. Why? The sacrificial system is the one that God has laid down so that you, with the help of God, can deal with the sin that God cannot overlook unless there is a substitution. Because God is a holy and a righteous and just God. 
So in the Old Testament, the animal sacrificial system. And so look at this. Because of God's rich, who is rich in mercy, great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses. See, He loved us even when we were like rebels, dead in our trespasses. But there's a condition to His blessings. There's a condition to connect with Him. And He laid down the agreement. He laid down the arrangement. This is it. This is the contract. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you, but you have to abide by the contract. So that you don't become the object of my wrath. Justice and judgment. It's coming. If people do not repent, that's why we need to preach the gospel, not just about, you know, oh, God is a good God. No, God, God, God is going to punish the unrepentant. The wrath of God is coming. God has a multifaceted character and traits and attributes. The imbalance is a wishy-washy gospel. Is, it's all love. It's all grace. No. You have to balance that with the justice of God. The legalistics functioning in the Old Covenant are all like cast the first stone. We cannot fulfill the Ten Commandments. They're adding some more. The washing of the hands. Like, you know, when Jesus came, the, 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 the religious world in Israel were divided in two. It was divided in two. Those who failed miserably, the outcast. And those who have done more than the rest are the religious hypocrites and prideful religious leaders. The Pharisees, the Sadducees. You know, teaching the words not being a Pharisee. Being a Pharisee is when you, th you think you're holier than others. It's the attitude. When you're better than a, a publican who prays, who could not even lift up his head. When we present the gospel in such a way that we think we're better than the sinners. We're better than other Christians. That's the spirit of the Pharisee. It's functioning in pride. I'm better. Are you with me? And so we need to have the balance of the character of God. God is loving. God is just. You cannot have just one that's going to be what? Misrepresenting God. So here, this is proper exposition, my friends. You have to read the verses one by one, one by one, one by one. And understand this. Yes, we're objects of wrath before Christ. That's the justice of God. But hey, can you read this verse? God who is rich in mercy. God, because of His great love, even when we were dead in trespasses, even when we were dead in rebellion and in independence, He made you born again. He made you alive. He connected you by His Spirit to God. And by grace, you have been saved. Explaining grace. Paul, let's go to verse 8. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. The word grace is similar to the word gift. When you give a gift, do you give a receipt and charge that person and say, this is my number, e-transfer? No. It's free. And I'll explain the difference between works and faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of work, lest anyone should boast. So the old covenant is self-effort. That's why it either, it's either it makes you condemned and guilty. All, all are condemned and guilty. But those who have failed miserably, they're like outcasts. Or you're prideful, but they're supposed to be guilty as well. But they don't accept. Therefore, they're not saved. Therefore, they, are not, they have rejected Christ. Therefore, they have crucified Christ. Because if only they would admit that they're sinners in need of a Savior, then Jesus can save any Pharisee and any Sadducee. Because that's the requirement of the new covenant. And you might be saying, well, where's, where's, where's the good works? No, we're not saved by good works. We're saved through faith in Christ. The good works follow. It's not even yours. It's God's. He prepared beforehand. He downloads by His Spirit, with His Spirit, when we put our faith in Christ, the blueprint of who you are and what you are 
to do as good for the glory of God, not for self. Are you with me? It comes with a package. It comes with a software program. Salvation, knowing God, all kinds of stuff, and then the good works. You have a new vision, a new perspective, a new purpose, a new growing godly character. And it's part of that grace. So let's, let's study what is, what is God's part and what is man's responsibility. Are you ready? Okay. In order to come to this agreement. Now, the one who made the arrangement, it's all God. We just need to abide and comply. God is not requiring that you come up with your own agreement or arrangement. God will not accept your own arrangement. God, just bless me. God, this is, this is what I promise, God. This is our arrangement. I promise you, Lord. I'll give you my tithes. I'll give you my life. I'll follow you, Lord. Just, just Lord, give me this job that I've been applying for, $50 per minute. You're trying to make an arrangement which is a non-arrangement with God. God has his laws. You cannot do it. This is how you do it. Through this covenant. Okay? Are you ready? Terms and condition. God's part. What is God's part? His grace in Christ Jesus. His mercy, His love and grace. We don't deserve any of His goodness, but He wants to give it to us through the person of His Son. In the Old Covenant, when they offered sacrifices, they raised up that animal. It's from them. Or they bought it from somebody else. In this New Covenant, okay, it's grace. It's given by God. The sacrifice was given by God. So we are the undeserving. We cannot earn the goodness of God. And so God provided what? God provided His only Son, again, the requirement for substitutionary sacrifice so that God can deal with the sin that blocks our relationship with God, that blocks the blessings of heaven so that God can be freed up and do what He promises in the covenant to us. So God gave the sacrifice. God gave the gift of His only Son, who was the sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. And so you cannot promise to change. You cannot promise to be a better person. That is none, that's a non-agreement and non-arrangement. From, it's not from God. You cannot say, God, pag nagbago na ako, when I change, I go to church. No, it doesn't work that way. God laid down the agreement God provided the sacrifice so that God can deal with our sins, and that is through His Son. Period. Oh, God would listen to me if, if I'll pledge 50 chairs for $50 each. You know, you're sitting on chairs that people pledge and paid for. When we were still at the Philippine Center, 11 or 12 years ago, people pledged I, 10 Ten seats, five hundred dollars, Pastor. Here's my pledge. And so God bless me because I pledged and given fifty chairs for the new building of IWC. My, it's good that we don't put names on chairs. We don't say that to God. That is not the agreement of God. Lord, I, I provided IWC the windows. Yeah, that little one there. My name is on the window. You want some more windows? It's kind of dark here. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, God provided the atonement, the forgiveness of our sins. God provided the sacrifice, the substitute. And that is Son Jesus Christ. It's based on the merit of Jesus Christ, not our good works. Now, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, I'll give you scriptures. In Him we have redemption, meaning redeemed, or like we were pawned in the pawn shop of sin and Satan. So God needed to redeem us. How are we going to be redeemed? By the blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. 
Let me give an example. You pawned your car, your Lexus. You pawned it for, let's say, $5,000. It's worth $50,000. You don't have the money. You're, you're drowning in debt. And then Kuya Fermel came out of his generosity. He paid $5,000. He took the receipt. And he came to you and said, I paid for it. Here's the receipt. All you have to do is, is believe and take the receipt. The receipt is the word of God. But you're like, how, I don't think you're, how can you do that? No, I don't think you're going to do it. I'll, I'll pay for it. If you want, I'll pay you. You're trying to find your way to deal with something already paid for. <laughs> yeah, I, I, if I be crucified on the cross uh, this coming Good Friday. If I can actually you know, whip my back and dip in the ocean water, I think that would solve my problem of sin and God will bless me and I'll be close to Jesus. We're going to be BFFs. No. It's only by the blood of a substitute. Next verse, Hebrews 9.22. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. See, the requirement of a substitute. And Jesus was the gift of the sacrifice that God provided so that he can deal with our sins and forgive us of all of our sins. So why don't you give God the best clap that you can give him? You might be saying, well, that's the sins. What about the sin? The flesh, part of that grace is the God's gift of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Covenant, there was no Holy Spirit in, in, in us. It's human effort. Well, how is it that the Bible said the Holy Spirit came upon Samson? Yeah, he came upon people, but he did not dwell in people. That's why people in the Old Testament were not born again. Only people in the New Covenant are the ones who can be born again. The Spirit who convicts us when the gospel is preached, the Spirit is the one that helps us believe so that we believe and put our faith in Christ. And then He's the one who regenerates, makes our spirit born again so that we are now connected to God. And that Spirit resides in us so that that Spirit can help us do what we cannot do on our own. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, forgiveness, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Both are graces of God. God's generosity to the undeserving may be serving by the righteousness of the sacrifice, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So he forgives us and he provides us the power. And this delivers us from being wax figures or dummies or dummy Christians or mannequin Christians. Are you with me? That's why this, this teaching is very critical, not just to us believing, but also behaving. <laughs> you know, we believe in the joy of the Lord and yet we're the ones who are always frowning. <laughs> I believe in the joy of the Lord. I believe in the peace that passes all human understanding. <laughs> That's the coffee that I drank this morning. No, it's not. We have not yet known the power of God's peace. You know, the power of God's peace is peace with Him. When you are reconciled with God, peace with Him through the blood of Jesus, then you have the peace of God. When we really understand this and believe it, okay? So the Holy Spirit is given, given to us. Now, what is man's part? Man's part, which is faith, repentance included. <laughs> oh, when we say faith, I believe in Jesus, and then some people, they don't repent. They still steal, they still slander, they still malign, they still are bitter against their parents. They cannot forget what their parents did when they were uh, as far as two years old. Imagine you can remember two years old. You have a very powerful memory, that of an elephant. 
That's why an elephant, they said, has a very powerful and a memory, and yet he is bound by a very thin rope because he remembers when he was young, he cannot be set free from that thick rope. Now you use a stick and a very thin rope, and when it extends, this powerful beast and creature goes back to his comfort. Because it's not just faith. Faith includes repentance. And I'll explain. Turning away from sin, right? It's faith in Christ for salvation. The finished work of Jesus Christ, the substitutionary sacrifice of His life, the shedding of His blood, is the one that will forgive all of our sins, that will take away the sin of the world. That's why John said, Behold the Lamb of God. John the Baptist in John chapter 1 said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So we need to have faith in Christ, believing that He alone can be the forgiveness of our sins. He alone can impute righteousness on us so that we can be right before God. Not by promising to be better. Not by trying to be good. No. It's faith in Christ based on what He finished, dealing with our sins and bringing us to God with His righteousness. Okay? Okay? So it says here, going back to Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace you have been saved through, read with me, faith. Faith alone. On Christ alone. On His grace alone. It's not works lest anyone should boast. Now let's, let's di- differentiate works and faith here, okay? The example is Abraham. In Romans chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, what then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? Now, Abraham, when God found him, he was still Abram. There was still no hum. No gift for Christmas yet. Hum. Abram was pagan. Abram was an idol worshiper. He, he, he had different idols. A small idol, a Taller idol, a dark idol, a brown idol, different kinds of idols. He was, he was a pagan, a worshiper of false gods. And so, in Genesis chapter 12, that's when God spoke to him. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed or had faith in God, in what, what God said. It's like the good news. This is the good news. I'm just expanding it, clarifying it. God's way of salvation by dealing with our sins through the person of Jesus Christ. And it was not accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works. I'll try to be good. I'll try to be nice. I'll try to be more patient. I'll try to be kinder. I'll try to not to be critical. I'll try not to be bitter. That's works. The wages are not counted as grace, but it's debt. When you work, you get a paycheck. Grace doesn't work that way. Grace is simply believing. But to him who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Abraham believed before he did something, and God said, you're righteous. You're right with me. We're buddies. That was even before he took a step out of his country, out of his village, out of his city, out of his relatives. Amen? Faith in Christ for salvation. And it's in Christ alone. The the jailer in in Acts chapter 16, he asked Paul and Silas, how can I be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Peter, when he preached to the thousands who were listening to him after the, on the day of Pentecost, he said, nor is there salvation any other in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And that's only the name of Jesus. And Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can be forgiven and have the right to connect with God except through me. Is this clear? I don't know if you heard about the solace of Reformation. Salvation is through faith alone, by grace alone, in Christ alone. And these three solas are only, only, only solas 
operate synergist synergistically and describe how man can be made right with God. It is the grace of God alone He provided in the person of Christ alone, His Son, and it's only through faith that we can enjoy having a relationship with God in this new covenant. There's no other way. Amen? I'm about to wrap this up because I think we don't have enough time to finish this, but I would like to end with this. Faith in Him for salvation, but also faith in Him for His covenant promises. How many of you here, you have faith in Jesus Christ? Raise up your hand. Now, do you know the promises of that covenant? Now, in the covenant of grace, it's not called rights. It's privileges. We don't deserve it. It's a privilege. You work for it, it's a right. You got this? Privilege, so don't be demanding. Don't be entitled. Jesus! <laughs> Sometimes there are Christians like that. Jesus, if you don't give what I've been praying for, I'll stop going to church. I will not read the Bible anymore. Jesus. No. In the covenant of grace, it's a privilege. Because it's grace. We don't deserve it. it was, we were just made deserving by Christ. Now, when we have faith in Christ, look at this. I love this. 2 Corinthians 1.20. For all, say with me, all. All the promises of the covenant, all the promises of God in Christ are yes and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Let me give you an example, like an Old Testament promise. Let's say the commandment with the promise. Honor your father and your... What's the promise? That it may be well with you and you will have long life. So now we have not fulfilled that by our own power. We're found guilty. And so therefore, the chances of being cursed, life will not be well, and life will be short. It's very, very big. So we come to God and say, Father, forgive me of my rebellion against my parents. Forgive me for this weakness of being dishonoring and disrespectful, disrespectful of my parents. And so now, God, by, by Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior, can you please give me the power to honor my father and mother and obey them while I'm under them in the same roof, under one roof? Respect and obey. Attitude of respect, submission, and action of obedience. And you know what happens? The Spirit of God comes because it's the promise. He forgives. He saves. He gives the power. And lo and behold, you start honoring your father. And every head in your family are shaking in this belief. Something happened to Junior. <laughs> and it's the church that he goes to. They don't know yet it's Jesus by the Spirit of Jesus. All they say, it's the church. Are you with me? Simply because you have now learned how to connect with God, comply with the agreement, with the, with the contract that God has laid down, and His promises are yes and amen. Faith in Jesus for His covenant promises. And I will end with this. This is the primary promise of the covenant which is in order for man to have a relationship with God. When Adam and Eve sinned, it disconnected them from a relationship with God. God was walking in the cool of the day in the garden. After they sinned, they hid from God. Imagine this, imagine this. Before the sin and the fall, God came to the garden and Adam and Eve welcomed God. There was no guilt, no shame. The most affected part is the relationship we have with God. And so the most important and the most primary promise is that we will know God. We'll be close to God. We'll be intimate to God. And I would like to read this slowly. Ephesians 1, 13 to 17, the same church, church in Ephesus. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory, until we go to heaven. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the sins, see, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a promise that, 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 that accompanies that, or promises. 
Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, when you pray in the new covenant, you don't pray for anything else other than what is it's stipulated in the covenant. What is written, the terms and conditions, the promises of that covenant. If you go to Luke chapter 4, what's, what's the promise of the covenant? The coming of Christ is to open the eyes of the blind, spiritually blind, who cannot see God, who cannot know God. Through Jesus, God will remove the blindness from our eyes, and we can know and see God. You got this? This is the promise of the covenant. And so when you pray, Lord, I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior, forgiven of my sins, thankful and grateful. But I want to know you every day of my life. I want to know you now. I want to see you. I want to understand you so I can walk with you as a friend walks with a friend or as a wife walks with a husband. I, sh- I want to share life with you. Making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Now, let's... let's, let's Let's break it into pieces. What is the spirit of wisdom and the knowledge of him? Can we go to a commentary? I think some people are wiser than Pastor Juni. Is it okay? Okay. Now, in Ephesians, an introduction and commentary, he says, such wisdom and revelation, moreover, come not simply as such higher intelligence is given from God. Meaning, it's not head knowledge. You know that you can have a lot of verses and scriptures and, and, and theories and doctrines and theology in this brain, and yet you don't have a heart connection with God? You said, how is that possible? Because if you don't have the right attitude, those words will not drop to your heart. Look at all of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Look at all of the religious leaders. They memorize not just verses. They memorize books. They know a lot of things in the Bible, in the Torah, in the Old Covenant. And yet, look at that. They did not just reject Jesus. They crucified Jesus. So here it says, it's not about intelligence, higher intelligence given from God, but by the knowledge of Him, the personal knowledge of God Himself, which in the Bible always connects the experience of life in union and fellowship with Him. I'm I'm a Filipino immigrant here in Canada. And in the Philippines, when you say, do you know him? They say, do you know Mayor Sam Cates? In the Philippines, kilala mo ba si Mayor? And it's a, it's, a, it's a bragging right. Name dropping. Oh, I know Mayor. Mayor, yeah, he, he's my classmate in kindergarten. Was my classmate. So I asked some Canadians, hey, you're, you're Jewish, right? Do you know Sam Cates? And, and this is what I always get from them. I don't know him, but I know about him. Did that happen to any of you? Filipinos asking, do you know? Like, do you know Sam Cates, the ex-mayor, the former mayor of Winnipeg? I don't know him, but I know about him. There's a big difference. In Tagalog, it's not like the way it's used. No is like, kilala mo. It's all the same. Kilala mo, kilala mo. Anybody here, you know LeBron James? Raise up your hand. No, you don't know LeBron James. You know about LeBron James. There's a lot of Christian dummies who know about Jesus, but they don't really know Jesus. Christian mannequins. When I say dummies, it's like mannequins, okay? It's not a put down, please. It's not. It's like wax figures. You think it's real, but when you go up close, it's not real. So it's possible to be a Christian, a pastor, and yet, I don't know him. I only know about him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is to know him in union to life and fellowship. You know about LeBron James, but let me tell you, his wife knows him. That's two, two, two different things. And the key is understanding faith. Faith in the, in the original word is pistis, meaning, meaning trust meaning repentance, meaning this is rebellion, this is the wrong path. That's why the title of this series is This is the Way. This is the wrong way. I make a 180-degree turn from my rebellion, from my independence, from my sinful life. I believe in Jesus to help me go the right path, go to God. Repentance included in faith. And repentance and faith equals surrender. 
to the person of Jesus Christ. May I ask you a question? How many of you here, you're married? Raise up your hand. If you're a man, please raise it high for the good of your future. For the good of your after lunch, or after the service. The closest to a person is his wife or her husband. Because they share life together. Like, nothing compared to anybody. Even greater than that of a father and a son. Or a, a, a daughter and a, a mother. It's the most intimate connection. Spiritually, emotionally, physically. And how do you get into a marriage relationship? You go into a marriage covenant. I will. I do. Till death do us part. For, for in sickness or in, or in, or in health, for, for richer and for poorer. That's how intimacy takes place. There's a surrender. There's a commitment. I'll end with the story of a uh, chicken in a um, pig. They were walking by the side of the road and they saw this grocery with the sign says, desperately needed eggs and bacon. And so the chicken said to the pig, his friend, Hey, piggy, let's help the grocer. I'll donate eggs and you donate bacon. <laughs> and the pig said, Are you crazy? You can easily drop eggs and leave. In order for me to give bacon, I need to give myself. I need to surrender to the grocer. I need to die to myself to give bacon. There's a lot of Christians going out there. They look like Christians. We sound like Christians. And yet we are chickens just dropping egg here and egg there and egg here and egg over there. And then we leave still alive and saying, I will live my life the way I want to. That is not repentance. That is not faith. That is not surrender. God is looking for pork chops, liempos, lechon. God's surrender is giving your whole life to God and trusting Jesus and believing that His death is enough for forgiveness of my sins to be close to God. I will give my all to Jesus. Surrender my pain, my heartaches, my bitterness, my sins, my anger, everything, my money, my resources, my talents. That is what is required of faith. It looks it's easy, but in reality, Jesus gave His all and requires our all by faith. That's why there are still a lot of Christians that look like Christians, but they don't look like Christians when you come up close. They have the form, but we don't have the power. You might be saying, are you not guilty of that? Well, I have been guilty of this for many, many times. But God has led me to the new covenant. Broken and repentant. I said, God, help me or else I don't know the power of the gospel. And I don't have the testimony to share it. And the credibility to share it. My friends, now is the time to really believe. Now is the time to really surrender. Now is the time to really repent. And when Jesus comes, He will clean the house and give the power to keep the house staying clean. Amen. Why don't we all rise up, give the Lord the best clap. Come on, let's give the Lord the best clap. And you know why? If you have not yet fully surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you're a Christian. Why don't you do it right now? Say it with your words and from your heart. If you're a chicken Christian, time to be a pig. If you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you have not yet repented of the life of rebellion and sin, now is the time to do it. Invite Jesus to come and be your Lord and Savior. I will not lead you in an altar call prayer. You can say that. There's nothing wrong with altar calls. It's just guiding people how to pray. But you can pray it on your own. I'll give you some few seconds to do that. And then we're going to sing with gratitude this song. It's a brand new song. 20 years ago, I think. But I want you to talk to Jesus. Talk to God. 
do a surrender, a repentance, and by faith in Christ, in whatever stage you are in, spiritually. gospel of Jesus Christ if you know and understand the new covenant you will be a grateful person be thankful joyful peace you don't just look like a Christian you are a Christian because you have the power of God's arrangement and agreement oh thank you forever grateful to God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ our Savior forever grateful for the presence and the power of the Spirit thank you God we surrender our lives to you in faith and repentance we choose Jesus to be our Lord and our Savior our God and and believe in what he has done and accomplished on the cross the grace of God in Christ Jesus Thank you, God. Help us to believe and behave the way you want us to believe and behave. For the glory of God, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, amen and amen. God bless you. See you next week. Have a great day and a great week. Thank you. If you wish to connect with us online, Here are social media accounts where you could follow us or watch live stream videos of our services. And here's our website where you can join a life group, give online, and watch past videos and many more. Again, my name is Jenny, and here's WhatsApp at IWC.